Welcome to another episode of Optimal Health for Busy Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Julian Hayes II, back at it again. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're listening to this through the podcast outlet, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, the mission here is to create generational health and wealth. And with that said, it is time for another State of the Union for your health. Now, Despite the seemingly negative world that we are living in right now, it seems like everything's negative at times, right? If you take a macro outlook right now, we are living longer, much longer, actually. Stretch this out over a 150-year span, we're living much longer. However, though, we might be living much longer, but we're not living better. Lifespan is going up but health span and wealth span are decreasing. I want you to pretend, close your eyes for a minute, pretend it's the year 2060. And in that time, the population over 65 in the United States is projected to double. One in five residents are of of the retirement age now. Who knows? Maybe the retirement age at that time is gonna be increased. Who knows? But the number of Americans needing long-term care services, that's going to double as well. You know, I, on a side note, it's crazy to even think about the year 2060 for me. I will be over 65. And that's just funny to even think about me being over 65. And I'm sure many of you feel that way as also. Now, Let's backtrack a little bit, and I want you to dial the time back, and I want you to only look a few years out. Now, a person here who's turning 65 in the next few years will spend anywhere from $142,000 to $176,000 on average for long-term care during their lifetime. And this is according to a recent report that is commissioned by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Now, this same report found that 15% of Americans over 65 will live with at least two disabilities by 2065. And I know this seems weird. Like, Julian, why are you talking about these stats about retirement and numbers and disabilities? I'm 34, I'm 30, or even 25, or I'm just 45. Why is this on my mind? Well, one, we have to think things long term. And two, as an entrepreneur, executive, business owner, and a human being in general, this is going to affect you in some form or fashion. Maybe this doesn't directly affect you, but this can still manifest itself in the form of emotional stress as you watch a loved one slowly wither away. And this takes a mental toll on you as well. I can speak firsthand to that experience as I sat through this, as I watched my father over the years, slowly and slowly um, see his physical health deteriorate. And I can see the stress that it takes, not not just on me, but on the toll of everyone around you. And that is a different form and that still can affect your performance. Now, this can also, of course, be a financial stress, which many have experienced. And this is not just a financial stress personally, but this can also be a stress to your company. You can have employees who are Uh, ushered into the role of being a caretaker and that takes away these great people for your company that is ultimately going to affect your bottom line so therefore these things do not exist in a silo and these things have a second a third a fourth a fifth a sixth degree order of magnitude and effects that touches us all and this is why we're all connected here now these are the stats that are of current times And the current paradigm of health and medicine, it's just about accepting this. This is a natural part of aging. This is just the thing that we have to look forward to as we get older in life. You know, I am in my mid 30s and I find it fascinating how many people that I knew from college and people throughout my 20s have just accepted that, oh, I'm in my 30s now. And these little aches and pains that are starting to show up is a natural part of life. You know, my 
A1C, my fasting glucose, my cholesterol is up a little bit, but that's cool. It's just a part of life. I don't physically feel like I used to. It's just a part of life. And this goes into the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I'm sure many of you heard these stories. It makes no apps, it makes no sense to me. Absolutely none at all. So this is why the very first thing when we think about aging, it's nothing tactical that needs to be worked on initially. The very first thing that needs to be addressed, aging needs a rebrand. Aging, and I'm going to say this in quotations, it needs to be destroyed and built back up. Brick by brick, step by step. Because right now, people think of aging as something that is untreatable, something that is just a naturally occurring part of life. It's naturally just as the day turns into night and the night turns back into day. And when you think of aging and getting older, thoughts of stubborn weight, a slower metabolism, you're just colder all the time. You have poor looking skin. And for the men out there, certain equipment is not working as it used to work. Aches and pains, as I mentioned earlier, they're expected. They're a normal part of life. In fact, you probably bond with other people that experience these similar aches and pains, and you normalize it. But I'm here to tell you that this isn't the case. It doesn't have to be. Aging is a disease, and we have to submit that through our heads, that aging is absolutely a disease. Aging is the main culprit of all the other chronic illnesses out there, all the other situations pertaining to health, is aging. Aging is at the middle of that. Aging is the mastermind. And I will get more into detail later on that. So when I think about this, instead of focusing on individual diseases, as we often do now, Focusing on health and aging, not only is it better for our personal well-being, but it's also much more economically sound. As I've stated, and I'm going to state again, aging is the disease that all other diseases are a symptom of that manifest in people's lives. And when you break this down further, this looks like a metabolic slowdown, which Breaking down further, you can simply um, coin the term inflammaging. Now, in a study in the journal Nature Aging, it's a 2021 study, and it found that a slowdown in aging that increases life expectancy by one year is worth $38 trillion. And slowing down aging by 10 years 367 trillion dollars that's a lot of money and it's no secret that the u.s is in debt a lot now i don't know maybe i should run for office and bring this up and find a way to help the economy i don't know maybe at another topic I'll, maybe at another time i'll do that but let me stay on topic here before i introduce these three principles that must be adopted to usher in what i call this health 2.0 world Let's simply get the definition of what is aging out of the way. Now, when you think of aging, I don't want you to think of aging as just this mere accumulation of trips around the sun and just getting older from a number standpoint. Instead, I want you to think of aging as biological changes over time that eventually decrease in functioning. And this is what leads to those undesirable illnesses and situations. And, you know, with this in mind, the very first thing afterward, in terms of this rebranding of aging that we must do, we must separate chronological age from biological age. And then let's give credence and priority to biological age and how those various systems are functioning inside our bodies. We have 10 hallmarks of aging, and this is a great way to assess how things are going, how our health is going. Yes, genetic testing 
is beneficial. Lab testing, blood testing, all these tools that we have available at our disposal can help in regards of looking at these 10 critical areas. And I have someone like myself who's in their mid thirties compared to someone who's maybe 50 or 55, we're gonna have different focuses on our precision longevity approach. But nevertheless, both of us are going to each pay attention to those 10 areas. The 10 areas will just have different perspectives on terms of what we're going to address. You know, off the top of my head, we can look at something such as synalytics. A guy like me in his mid thirties will not have to push that synalytic envelope and focus on those as much as someone who is 55. So after we laid this scene out about aging, we laid out the cost associated with aging. I want to share three ways that we can usher in and combat this thing we called aging and rebrand it. And I'm going to do this in the manner of, I want to contrast health 2.0, which is the new way, the new world that I see with health 1.0, which is the old way of doing things. You can say it's modern medicine. You can say it's the modern world in general. So the shift number one, the very first shift that we see is that health 1.0 it sees aging as a normal condition and it doesn't require interventions. When you mention aging in this 1.0 world, someone says, oh yeah, it's just a part of getting older, I guess. And it's just, and they leave it at that and they keep it moving. In the health 2.0 world, aging is the central condition that demands and needs the treatments and the interventions. Health 1.0, it sees slowing down and having a harder time staying fit and healthy. It's normal, it's a natural current. Not only does it sound like complacency, which this is plaguing society right now. Society is becoming much more complacent. But this makes also getting chronologically older sound terrible. This sounds like something that I should dread. I don't want these things. Is this what I have to look forward to as I get older? Is to just be a lesser version of myself? That sounds terrible. So in Health 2.0, we recognize that at least 75% and maybe even a little higher percentage, actually, that all the elements, ailments, pardon me for that, ailments that affect us, that could potentially affect us, all these things, they're lifestyle driven. And the cause of that is aging. So if the cause of 75 or more percent of these ailments, if they're lifestyle driven and they're a result of aging, why not just attack aging itself? So Health 2.0 sees that aging is essentially the head of the octopus and all the other ailments and situations that I call, some people may call diseases or chronic illnesses, those are tentacles out there. But at the middle is the head and that's aging. And so we put that in the central spot and we focus on that. And what that does when you focus on aging and you know that it's mostly lifestyle driven and that you have more control than what you initially believed, you realize that you have control over the experience of how you live life in the coming years and in the coming decades. You realize that you, with this control, have control of generations after you that you can be the spark that ignites many that come after you that is the crux of generational health and also generational wealth that comes from this because in my world accumulating trips around the sun with chronological age it comes wisdom but it doesn't just come wisdom by itself it has wisdom 
that is also maintaining optimal health as you're doing this. You only get better with time and age. So the second shift here, Health 1.0 focuses on attacking and fighting these specific illnesses and pathogens. And it's essentially playing a game of whack-a-mole. Knock one off, three more appear. Health 2.0 operates with a gyroprotective mentality. Now, if you hear the word gyroprotective, which sounds like a great word. I like the way that sounds, so that's why I said it. Now, another way to say this is simply anti-aging. They're essentially the same thing, right? Health 2.0 says, why age at all? The best strategy is to not age, at least in the way that mainstream and the health 1.0 people term aging. Precision performance longevity is about the marriage between performing at your highest level possible while maintaining optimal health. They go together. It's a synergy. It's a marriage. It's a symbiotic relationship. Now, this may seem counterintuitive as so many initiatives and campaigns out there focuses on eradicating and just getting rid of various ailments that are out there. For example, let's look at this. We've been fighting and attacking obesity for years. Different, different presidents and their um, teams have come throughout the years and different organizations that say, we're going to fight obesity and eliminate it. And these words sound good, but my eyes are telling me something else. My eyes and what I'm seeing as I go throughout the day and I look and look at data and, and I see that obesity has been rising. I see that metabolic inefficiencies have been on the rise. I don't see those areas getting better. I hear a lot of lip service, a lot of well-intended people, but the actual results are rather disappointing. And this is because Health 1.0 operates in silos. Health 2.0 operates with the system's mentality. In obesity's case here, it's not just a nutritional problem. So that's one of the mistakes. When you're thinking about obesity, there's mindset involved. There's a cultural issue. And there's environmental influences that have to be addressed. Now, you know, Health 1.0 doesn't address the root cause of the situation. And I found an old slide while creating and jotting down some notes for this episode. And this was from a longevity medicine class that I enrolled in. And if you are on the YouTube right now, then you can see the slide that I have up. And for those just listening, I will describe it. So this study that was done a long time ago, and it basically looked at if we were to eliminate various diseases and ailments, what would that do to the expectancy of life here? So for the first one here is cardiovascular disease. So we're comparing eliminating this at birth and we're comparing eliminating this at 65 years old. So cardiovascular disease at birth and cardiovascular disease, it got the Thanos treatment. You snapped your fingers and it's completely gone. It was an increase in 10.9 years. And at 65, it was 10 years. Let's look at something that's very prevalent now and that's increasing and that runs in my family a lot, and that's diabetes. At birth, it was 0.2 years. And at 65 years, it's 0.2 again. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything like that. 10 years is a big deal. Almost 11 years, if it's at birth, that's a big deal because that's that's almost 11 years that someone gets to still be here to hang out with their families and to experience life. Hopefully, it's a high, and it will be a higher quality of life since this, is not, this doesn't exist anymore. However, in the grand scheme of things and for the vision I have of running around with your great great grandchildren and not just seeing them this is going to this is not coming close to that mission because this is not close to 150 um it's not that close still to making 100 the new normal so this is still falling short of that and if you think about it once again 
this is a health 1.0 mentality if we're, re we're just thinking about one thing here because I, I get rid of one ailment. I still have a whole other host of ailments to address because I did not take care of the root cause of the entire operation, which is once again, aging. And that is the critical issue of why focusing on the biological process must be the priority. So let's shift to number three here. And Health 1.0 focuses solely on quantity and specifically lifespan. While Health 2.0 focuses on lifespan, health span, and well span, the trifecta. Now, it's one thing to live a long time. You can say, hey, I, I'm living to 115, 120, 130 years old. But if I live to 125 years old and those last 25 years sucked and I couldn't do the things that makes me feel alive, that makes me feel human, that brings me joy, and I'm just essentially a body that's existing, that's a pretty low quality of life where I can't do anything and compare that to someone who's living a long time while simultaneously experiencing a rich life. And this goes to running with your great, great grandchildren and seeing generations interacting actively with generations and not just seeing them. It's quality over quantity. These three principles are the foundation to a neural way that operates with precision and a systems mentality. And you hear me say precision and systems mentality a lot because those are two critical and pivotal pieces that must be kept top of mind. You are a busy entrepreneur, an executive, a content creator. Time is of the essence. You have a lot of exciting things to do in this thing we call life. The world we live in is 2022. We do not have time to go around hoping and guessing and using outdated philosophies of how we go about nutrition, exercise, and the whole gamut of things pertaining to our health. So as we land this ship here, Health 1.0 represents the old way. It's a dogmatic approach that has you avoiding problems and running away from them. This doesn't feel very empowering at all. It makes me feel smaller even just saying it. This health 1.0 model is based on fear, is based on anxiety, which also takes away your control. And once again, this feels awfully this feels awfully like society if I'm now that I'm thinking about it. It feels like society right now. That's based on fear and anxiety, which then takes away your control and you feel powerless. Health 1.0 treats a symptom. It treats a solution. It treats a situation. But it only treats those things once they arrive, once I can see the illness, once I can quote unquote diagnose you as pre-diabetic or diabetic, once I can see that you are 20 pounds overweight, overweight and your metabolism is in the toilet and your thyroid's not working that well, once I can see and that I'm physically not performing as I want to in the bedroom, in the boardroom, then I can get some help. That is the 1.0 model. And it sucks. Because it's operating in a reactive state that focuses on the problem only once it arrives. And the bad thing about it, it typically doesn't even solve the problem at the root cause. It's only going to manage it. It's only going to manage it. If so many people have metabolic syndrome, blood sugar dysregularity, we're going to give you something to help you manage it, but we're not going to eradicate the root cause of the issue. Health 2.0, it's about thriving. It's about enhancing. It's about getting the absolute most out of life. It's about freedom. Freedom of choice in terms of how you age, what you accept, freedom to live differently, freedom to think differently, to separate yourself from the scared, the anxious and the assimilated majority who accept the status quo of life. Health 2.0 is personalized, is proactive, it's lifestyle oriented, it's precise, and most importantly, it's empowering. You have control and you are more powerful than you can ever imagine.
So until next time, stay awesome, be limitless, and never stop upgrading. Peace.